Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with a voice of joy. For Adonai, Elion, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdues people under us and nations under our feet. Hello everyone and welcome to our first online ladies conference for 2020. We are coming into your homes and we want to thank you for inviting us in. So remember, like us, share, post, start your own watch party. I mean, who doesn't want friends around? This is going to be such a blessed time together. So we want you to spread the energy. Do you know someone who needs a miracle? Well, this is the right place. So thank you for joining us. But before we start, let's invite God, the Holy Spirit, as we just speak a blessing over this conference right now. So join me as you bow your heads. Father, it's in the name of Jesus, that mighty name, that supreme name, that we come before you. Father, we want to speak the name of Jesus into the atmosphere, over these airwaves right now, into every home, over every family, over every individual that is listening and watching. I pray, Lord God, that your spirit, the resurrected power of Jesus that's alive in us and by the authority by which we speak that right now you are breaking change you are setting people free lord you are resurrecting dead things lord god so that right now you can breathe life into dead bones i thank you father god that you are doing something miraculous in marriages right now that you are restoring relationships i thank you that right now lord god that those that are unemployed are finding employment because doors are being opened and so we thank you that even as you break the shackles to set free that we can Shout out in such a time as this so that you can be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you believe this prayer, shout an amen where you are. So coming up next is our mom, Hillary, uh, who is the mother to many a young lady here at FCC. And we are so blessed to have her. And she's accompanied by our praise and worship team that's going to take us into the throne room of God today where we're just going to glorify God together. So remember, like us. Share, start your own watch party. Okay, ladies, come on. We're going to praise the Lord now for He is glorious. He is worthy. Come on, get on your feet and let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
above every other name, to the name of Jesus. Amen. And we're going to just raise up a hallelujah in this place. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Jesus. Can I encourage you to worship with us? I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah 
great amen amen he is a great god we serve a great god let's declare it right now wherever you're sitting right now in your lounge with your families we are going to declare how great our god is amen let's go
you are holy and that you are worthy of all our praise and all our honor and all our worship. We thank you, Jesus. Come have your way, Lord. Thank you, Father.
out to our amazing FCC band. Thank you guys. Have you been ministered to today? I mean, did you hear the words of that song? Just breaking change, just listening, the wonder of his love, the power of God's love to set a captive free. And I hope that he's prepared your heart to receive all that God is about to do as he brings the word through uh, Mom Hillary today. And I just pray that your hearts have been challenged. And when you receive God's word, that you would embrace it and do what God's word tells you to do. Good morning. Welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us on this live broadcast that's going out who knows to where, all around the world perhaps. Thank you for watching us today. And please, would you take the time just to remain with us for a while to hear what God's Word has to say to you today. And if you're enjoying it, why don't you just give me a thumbs up, a like, one of those little hearts maybe that says, I'm enjoying what you have to say. Please do that. I'd love for you to engage with us. And if you need prayer at any time, won't you just contact us? We would love to hear from you. Welcome all around the world. You are welcome in this place. God is here and he is moving today. Thank you, Lord. May I just start this message by giving you my title, which is Shout It Out, Shout It Out. And I want to also say, I want to ask you a question. Who, who is the king of the jungle? Who is the king of the jungle? If I ask you that, everyone will say, the lion, the lion is the king of the jungle. Wouldn't you say so? But what makes him king? Is he the swiftest? Is he the wisest? Is he the largest? Is he the tallest? Is he the strongest? No, you have to say no to all of those things, don't you? He's not any of those things, and yet his identity makes him who he is. He is the king. He is the mighty one. And we need to know for ourselves too, who are we? Who is your father? Who is your daddy? Is the king of the jungle your father? That's what I need to ask you today. It's all about identity. It's about knowing who you are and knowing whose you are. That's why a group of lions is called a pride. They are very proud of who they are. And it's the roar of the king. It's the roar of the lion that makes him who he is. So, he's not intimidated, but the other animals are intimidated by him, are they not? When the lion roars, all, every single one of the animals take notes. When the lion rises up, then they just flee because they know the power of the Almighty One. So the lion of the tribe of Judah, he is your father. There is an old African proverb that says this. It says, the daughter of a king, uh, the daughter of a lion is also a lion. You are the daughter of the lion. You are the one that is the king of kings, is your Lord and your savior. The lion of the tribe of Judah is the one that is in charge. The devil has authority when you lack identity. I'll say that again, the devil has authority when you lack identity. Do you know who you are? Do you know whose you are? And if you're not sure, would you have a look at Romans chapter 8? Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, and 15 to 17. I don't have time to go into all that right now, but would you check it out? Would you have a look at Romans chapter 8? You can read the whole chapter because it will tell you who you are in Jesus. And don't be afraid. It's time for God's children, for God's daughters to roar. It's time for us to take back the authority to use our voices to speak out and not to be afraid. That is what the Lord requires of us. He wants us, children of God, to rise up and be the people that He needs us to be. 
the enemy would want to keep us silent, wouldn't he? In fact, that's what this is all about. It's to keep us silent. It's to muzzle our voices so that we cannot be heard, so that we cannot be effective for God's kingdom. But today we are, according to our theme, we are shouting. We are shouting the victory. We are men and women of victory, are we not? God says, do not be deceived by doubts. Do not be detained by fears. Move into the center of my will for you and for your life. My purpose is more for you, more for you. Glorious victories are waiting for you. Like these women in the scripture, great and mighty women rose up and they were not afraid to speak. What about Miriam in Exodus 15, 20 and 21? What about Deborah? who was a judge and a prophet. Judges 4, verses 4 to 9. Hulda was also a prophet. Maybe you don't know her. She's not so well known. But you need to look for her in 2 Kings 22, 14 to 20, 2 Chronicles 34, 22 to 28. And then there's Esther. We all know about Esther, don't we? The queen that she risked her whole life. She risked herself. She knew that to go before the king without an invitation was a very, very dangerous thing. But she was prepared to do it, to rescue, to save, to get the victory for all her people. And then there was in the New Testament, there was Anna. Anna was 84 years old and she was in the temple. She was living there, day and night, it says, and she wasn't afraid, but she was waiting for the promised Messiah, and that's what she was there for, and she saw Jesus. She saw that her king was there. And then there were the four daughters of Philip the Evangelist in Acts 21, 8 and 9. Four daughters, four unmarried daughters, it said, that were known as prophets at that time. All of these women declared the word of God and they declared the victory and they received that victory. Praise God for those women. God wants the, our voices to be heard. He wants us to speak out. He wants us to be intercessors that cry out before him in the dark of the night. He wants us to prophesy and to speak his words throughout the world. He wants his women to rise up and be heard. Let us not be afraid. You know that the traditional society is, uh, was, is a patriarchal society. It's male dominated, isn't it? It sees women many times as nothing, as ins insignificant as those that don't have a voice to speak out. But God is saying to us, women of God, let's not be afraid. Let's rise up. There was a yoke of limitation placed on women, a yoke to keep us down, to keep us quiet. But God is saying, it's time to rise up, women of God. It's time to break off that yoke of limitation. It's the anointing power of God, the Holy Spirit, that can release you and set you free. Do not be afraid, woman of God. It's time. It's time for us to shout out. It's time for us to rise up and let us do it in Jesus' name. Uh, there's a beautiful saying by Mahesh Shalta. He's written a book about a woman being released and this is what he says. Pentecost is the redemptive voice of God to men and to women. The voice is the essence of God himself, activated to affect his will in the moment, restored by the power of Christ and his resurrection, and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Women are coming into their own. We see that in Joel 2, that the Spirit of God is poured out on male and female, on your sons and your daughters, 
on your maidservants and your men servants. That's God's promise. When he pours out his spirit, it is for everyone. God doesn't see women as subservient. God sees women. He acknowledges women. And he, Jesus went out of his way to, to meet women. There's, there's a, a particular woman that was in Samaria that Jesus went out of his way to reach her, to touch her, and to be there with her. She was a broken woman. She was desperate. And Jesus took her a turn around to Samaria where he could go and talk to her and meet with her. That woman <laughs> became the first evangelist. She is the one that ran back into the town to go and tell about the goodness of God and that Jesus was there. She called the people to come and see and to hear Jesus. So our speech was, re was redeemed by tongues of fire, tongues of fire. Why does the scripture talk about tongues? Why well, doesn't it say flames of fire? Have you ever thought about that? Because it would be more normal to say flames of fire came and rested. But he said tongues of fire rested. Maybe it's similar to Isaiah in Isaiah 4, where the coals from the altar were placed on his tongue to release him, to place on his lips, because he recognized his need of God. Women are influencers. Women are glory changers. They, were, they are people that will make a difference. They are mark makers. They are destiny shapers. And as God heals the heart of women, the issues of women, they are beginning to speak out. Now, two scriptures quickly for you. <laughs> In John chapter 15, verse 7, Jesus speaking says, If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. If, it's about intimacy, that's the condition, it's right there, isn't it? It's about intimacy, it's relationship, it's oneness with him, it's truly knowing him. If you remain, in the Amplified it says, if you live in me, if you abide vitally united to me and my words. Now this means my words abide in you. It doesn't just mean nodding your head in agreement. It means letting them shape you. It means God's DNA in you. Speak it and declare it in prayer and praise. And then I'm reading from Psalm 81, from the Passion Translation. I'm going to read verse 10 and 13 to 16. I am your only God, the living God. Open your mouth with a mighty decree. I will fill it now, you'll see. The words that you speak, so shall it be. Oh, that my people would once and for all listen to me and walk faithfully in my footsteps, following my ways. Then and only then, I will conquer you, every foe, and tell them you must go. Those who hate my ways will cringe before me and their punishment will be eternal. But I will feed you with my spiritual bread. You will feast and be satisfied with me. There's the word, the word in you. Feeding on my revelation, truth like honey, dripping from the cliffs of the high place. If, if you abide, if, it's going back to relationship with God. You have the authority in your mouth today. Yes, the enemy is trying to shut your mouth. He's trying to quieten you, silence you. Do not allow him to stop your voice. The word of God flowing from your mouth. Agree with the Lord and his word by speaking it out, by declaring it. You're not of this world. We are not global citizens. We are heaven citizens. Let us speak as those who come from the homeland. Let us speak and declare God's word. 
speak my word, says the Lord, as I watch over it to perform it. I just want to bless you as I close, and I thank you for watching. And please take note of the song that's going to be played now as our dancer comes to dance for us. Please take note and speak the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name
FCC ladies and all our viewers, today I just want to encourage you to just shift from having the usual normal mentality whereby tithe and offering is usually limited and people kind of think that, oh well, it's just offering, it's just tithing. You know, I really feel that, you know, as I was just, you know, waging war with this word, that God was revealing a few truths that it's not just tithing, it's not just offering. And I really believe that he wants to establish his covenant and show you how faithful he is. But the only currency that he is operating with is this. So I believe that, you know, when we choose to hold on to this and say, hey Lord, you know what, I can't give you. That is proclaiming that we do not trust in God the provider. A few scriptures were highlighted or put in my heart whereby in Genesis 22, God showed me Abraham's heart. The word opens up and starts off by God testing Abraham. And I believe that we are living in testing times, whereby there is this pandemic, the corona, where the world has been declaring that there is lack. The world has been declaring that there is a recession. You know, you need to hold on to this with dear life. God is saying, release it, trust me and it's only activated through giving. So the tricky part is that when Abraham was tested to offer his son and put him on the altar, God was actually testing his heart. It was not about the son. It was not about the offering. It was about how much do you trust me? How much are you willing to let go so that you can see what I've got in store for you? Because trust me, when Abraham laid his son down, he gained many, many, many descendants. The secret thing that God was actually showing me is, you know, so when we look at giving, we look at, hey Lord, you know, God is asking me to give of my first fruit, my best, and we feel like we are going to lose something. But that's a limited perspective because I believe that once we give, we are tapping into what God has got in store for us. He is not asking us something that he hasn't yet done. When God says to you, give your first fruit, give of your best, it's not from a place that he wants to rob you. He's coming from a place that he wants to bless you with the best. And if you've got the mentality of lack, then you are going to reap lack. God wants to change our hearts today and I really, really, really believe that. And when you just reduce offering to just, uh, I'm just going to offer, uh, I'm just, go I'm just going to give and you're not actually checking that. You know what? God is saying that I gave everything for you so that you might gain and have access. When you lose that part and you withhold like Ananias and Sapphira, whereby they did not see the abundance, they did not see the God of prosperity, they did not see provision, they did not see Jaira and get to know him from that point. I was just, you know, having a casual conversation with Mikey, my husband, and I was saying, you know, I realize why this word is so weighty on my heart and it's not because it's just giving. I believe it's covenant. I believe that it's also doing what God did. God never withheld anything. He gave his only begotten son. And when we give, it kind of like reflects that truth. It's declaring, it's giving a shout that, hey, you know what? I am a child of the covenant. And when you give, it's actually saying, hey, I am trusting God to provide. When you give and you release this, it's saying, God, I know that you've got more for me. But when you withhold it, you're basically saying that God, 
this is all I've got. So I'm really encouraging you, you know what, to really search your heart and just open up and, you know, just measure, you know, your giving and say that, you know, how loud is your shout? You know, because, yeah, God gave the biggest, biggest, biggest shout, you know, when he released and gave his son unto us. How big is your giving? I really hope that you've been inspired to give today. So if you want to give, you will see the banking details at the bottom of our screen. Be blessed. Amen.
to the worship team for that beautiful song. Welcome to my session and the FCC Ladies Conference 2020. Let's just open in a word of prayer. Father, I just want to give glory and honor to you, Father God, for this online service, oh God, and for this time of celebration, oh God, and we just want to honor you, Father God, for who you are to us, oh God, and we want to lift up your name, oh God, and exalt your name, Lord, right now, and Father, we just commit this time into your hands, oh Father God, and everything that will be shared, oh Father God, we just pray that, Lord Jesus, you would just bless it, oh God, bless it into every person, oh God, that is listening now, Father God, to this message in Jesus' mighty name. I just want to say to you, ladies and everyone that's watching, uh, whether you are in your bedroom or in your living room, just relax and just enjoy and just receive today for the Lord. I really believe God has something great in store for you. So let's enjoy this time. As you know, the FCC theme for this year is it's time to shout. Amen. And it is time to shout. And we're going to shout and celebrate uh, uh, during this time. Amen. I want to share with you a word about worshiping God as a lifestyle. And you know, we know that David in the Bible talks about how um, David worshiped God and lifestyle for David was worship. Amen. So we want, I would like for us to learn how David went into the inner courts and how David worshipped. Amen. David is known in the Bible as a great example of a true and godly worshipper. In fact, God referred to David as a man after his own heart. Amen. From an early age, David seemed to understand the importance of having a close relationship with his Lord. Through many accounts in his life, David inspires us in the way he worshipped God. I want to read from Psalms 28, 7. It says, The Lord is my strength. He is my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. With my song, I will praise him. I will sing praises to him. There are many times in the Bible uh, where David messed up. He messed up so badly in his life. But one of the way of him getting out of that mess was that he would go and worship God. David talked, in his, he, David talked his way right into the heart of God. And uh, if he wasn't talking his way in, he was singing his way in. And he was shouting praises to the Lord and he danced his way in. Amen. David had the ability to release his most inner feelings to God, his most inner thoughts to God. David had a song for almost every occasion in his life. And you know, in, the, uh, in times of uh, when David needed direction, he would say, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. In times of happiness, David would sing to the Lord and he would say, Then I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be glad because he rescues me. In times of uncertainty, David would sing, My heart, it is steadfast, O Lord. I will sing and I will sing to you. I will give praises to your name. In times of trouble, David will sing, God is my refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. When David was weak, he would sing, I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saved me. I call to the Lord who is worthy to be praised and he saved me from my enemies. You will find that in Psalms 18, 1 to 3. In times of discouragement, David will sing, Cast all your cares upon the Lord, for he shall sustain you and he shall never let the righteous be shaken. Amen. When David had near-death encounters or near-death experiences, he would sing, For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, 
and my feet from stumbling. David could express to the Lord exactly what he felt through his singing, through his dancing, through shouting unto the Lord, through praising uh, the Lord. David's words and actions revealed characteristics of the kind of worship that pleases God. Amen. David was a broken worshiper in times when he was troubled. It's the word of God says in Psalms 51, 16 to 17. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart God will not despise. These painful times brought about a new humility in David and a great, uh, greater understanding of his need for God's mercy. So you can see even in David's uh, time of brokenness, he went before God. No matter what he was going through, he knew he can go right before God and worship God. And God will just bring back that joy and that peace and that comfort and that strength to him. David was a focused worshiper. In Psalm 63, 1 to 5, it says, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I will seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because you, your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. David kept his eyes fixed on his God, looking up rather than looking around him. David was a passionate worshiper. 2 Samuel 6, 12 to 15, it says, David danced before the Lord all night while he and the entire house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sounds of trumpet. David was so engaged in his worship to God. His wife, Michal, disapproved of his behavior and she called him, she called it vulgar. But in spite of that, David would say, I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this. You will read that in 2 Samuel 22 to, uh, 21 to 22. David knew the power of fully embracing the act of giving glory to God. True worship means uh, worshiping God in heart, mind, soul, strength and with all that is within you. So ladies, it's all right if, if other people don't understand or approve of the way you worship God, as long as we know that God is pleased with our worship. First Samuel 17, 42 to 47 says, David was, it talks about David facing a really big giant. And he thought to himself, the Lord has delivered me from, uh, the Lord has helped me when I killed the lion, and he was with me when I killed the bear. Surely the Lord will deliver me from this Goliath. I believe God is saying to us, like David, we were created to shout and dance and praise. Amen. Like Goliath has already fallen. Amen. Women of God, I want to encourage you today that this is our time to shout like our battles are over. Amen. We need to see every sickness, every battle, every giant fall in the name of Jesus. Um, let's declare that we will overcome every obstacle, outlast every challenge and come through every difficulty. And I want to declare this over you today, that you are going to rise up, woman. You are going to rise up with boldness, with courage and with strength. This is your time and it's your season to shine. Colossians 1.27 says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. In spite of all that's going on around you or against you, as long as you are focused on God, Christ is your hope and he is your glory. Amen. Everything David uh, thought, felt and did was motivated by a desire to give glory to his heavenly father. He worshipped God. It was a natural thing for David 
to worship God. It was as natural as David breathing. Amen. And I also want to encourage you that humans may fail us. Amen. But the God we serve is like, like no human being. Amen. He is sovereign. Our God is sovereign. Our God is holy. Our God is mighty. Our God is powerful. And I want to tell you this, ladies, that our God is mindful of you. Amen. He loves you because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. And that means that he will carry you through no matter what you go through. If he said it, he will surely do it. God will keep his word regarding you. Amen. God wants us to move forward. In Exodus 14, 15, it says, God told Moses, tell the children of Israel to move forward. And that's what God wants us to do. If we look back, then we backslide. But if we move forward, God says that uh, he is a progressive God. Amen. He wants us to move forward. Amen. In spite of what is uh, behind us, in spite of what is beside us, in spite of what stands before us, you have the word of God inside of you uh, to move forward. Amen. So ladies, I want to say that it is our time to praise God and worship God and glorify God like we've never done before. Amen. Don't worry about who's watching you and what they do. God is with you. God will deliver you like he delivered Goliath. Amen. And I just want to tell you that you are special in God's eyes. So I want to say, come out from behind the rock. Come out from your hidden place and let's worship God and let's praise God like we've never done before. Amen. So ladies, I just want to encourage you today that when you worship God, there's something that happens on the inside of you and God's, you just forget about everything else that's around you and just focus on God. And when you worship God, whatever you're going through, God will help you. And through that worship, God will uh, take you out of your troubles and your difficulty because worshiping God will bring you out of that depression. I really believe that when you worship God and you're struggling financially or whatever, worshiping God will bring you out of that poverty. When you worship God, God will pull you. God will change your character. He will deliver you from anger and frustration and whatever it is that you're going through. If you have fear in your life, ladies, I want to tell you that in that time when you worship God and you dance before God and you praise the Lord Jesus Christ, God will remove all kinds of fear from you. So whatever it is, uh, that you're going through in life, just know that worship has a big role, can play a big role in your life. And when you worship God, God will deliver you from any, uh, He will set you free from every bondage. He will set you free from things that are holding you down. He will set you free from all darkness. Amen. And when you worship, I want to tell you this, ladies, that worshiping God is like a therapy. When you worship, and that's how I feel in my own life, you know, when I worship God, I, I feel so much better. I feel so joyful when I'm down and I'm hurt and I, I feel her. Uh, that, that, you know, when things come against me and I go before God and I just have my time with my Father God and when I come out of there, I come out a better person. Amen. I feel uh, restored. I feel God has uh, redeemed me as well. Amen. I feel the healing of God as well when we go deep into God's presence. And I want to tell you that when you worship God, you become, you become a better mother. Amen. When you worship God, you become a better wife if you're a wife. And when you worship God, and if you're a leader, you come out a better leader. And I want to say to you, lady, ladies, that when you worship God and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you come out a better Christian. Amen. A better vessel for God. Amen. I want to tell you that you need to make that appointment every single day where you have the time of just praising God worshiping God, you know what, just dancing before God and do that on your own, uh, in your own private time. And when you're worshiping God with everybody else, I want to tell you, you don't have to worry about who's looking at you because when you worship God, it's between you and our Father. Amen. It's between you and God. Worship God 
like the spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against the enemy. Amen, ladies, how good is that? I want to tell you that when you worship God, God is going to bring out the best in you because God loves you so much. Something greater happens on the inside of you when you worship God, when you really go before his throne room and you just love on our Father God and God will change everything around you. And I want to tell you that when you worship God and when you go into an atmosphere when it's dull and and you know, it, 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 there's no God there, but you can go and change that atmosphere because of the love of God and the, the spirit of God and the anointing of God and the joy of God inside of you. Amen. Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall And all those lonely roads that I have traveled on There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now. And there was Jesus in the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment. Man who needs amazing kind of grace. Forgiveness at a price I couldn't pay. I'm not perfect, so I thank God every day. There was Jesus. There was Jesus. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing, in the In the shadows of the alleys There was Jesus In the fire and in the flood There was Jesus Always is and always was No, I never walk alone You were always there to our FCC Ladies Conference. I just wanted to speak out to all the ladies throughout the world, throughout the nations today, that this conference God has given me to touch the hearts of every woman today. 
And I know that sometimes it may not be easy for you. Some of you are very lonely. Some of you are very suicidal. Some of you are very um, hurt by a lot of pain that was caused to you. But today I want to speak to you and I want to say to you that, you know, your hope is in Jesus. And today I want to bring hope to you. This is my heartbeat. This is where I feel that God needs to touch you in the point of your need today. So God bless you. Amen. Okay, I'm reading from the book of Joshua, chapter 6, and from verse 1. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry the trumpets of ram's horns in, in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priest and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry the trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army, advance, march around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the ark of the Lord. When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the priest who blew the trumpets and the rear guard followed the ark. All this time the trumpets were sounding, but Joshua had commanded the army to not give a war cry, to not raise your voices, do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout, then shout. So he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it once. Then the army returned to the camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early the next morning and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. Then the armed men went ahead of them and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord while the trumpets kept sounding. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. And on the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except on that day, they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and the whole and all who were with her in the house shall be spared because she had hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the, uh, keep away from the devoted things so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble in it. Amen. So today, as I was sharing and I was reading about this and I was asking the Lord, why did I have to choose the walls of Jericho? Why did I have to choose Joshua for you today? And the Lord spoke something very, very profound. He says, because I'm going to give it into your hands. I'm going to give victory into your hands and I thought about it very very clear because with the pandemic that we're in right now in South Africa what is happening in South Africa there are walls all around us we are in, in lockdown right now we have this virus that's causing so much of deaths people are upset people are emotionally scarred because of the deaths because they cannot even mourn properly for their own loved ones and so as I was thinking about it, I was thinking that's what exactly happened to the Israelites. They, were, they could not go into the city and they could not come out because it was, it was blocked. So here God is saying, he's giving an instruction to Joshua. And he's telling Joshua, Joshua, 
This is what I want you to do. I want you to take seven priests, seven rams on, and I want you to have the ark, I want you to have the rear guards there, and I want you to go march around the city. And you know, marching around the city is not just, you know, going there and just walking around. Marching around the city is to, it, it comes with, it comes with uh, understanding that if I do march there, I am taking authority somewhere. And so, so Joshua listens to God and he does that. So he does it for the first day. He does it for the second day. And he does it till the sixth day. On the seventh day, he marched seven times. Now, anyone can look and say, ah, oh, you know, what's these people doing? Just walking around the walls of Jericho. You know, are they going loony or something? Are they sick? Is there something wrong with them? Are they trying to put a show? You know, those kind of things. But there was something ahead that was supposed to come for them. And the obedience of Joshua to God. Now, I just want to bring you to this, to this notice. Now, Joshua, to walk around there is a simple thing. In order to go and capture a, 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 a people or a place or the enemy, put it in that way, he needed to take an army. But God gave him a simple form to walk around the walls. Why would God give him a simple form instead of saying, Joshua, yeah, I've got an army for you. Go and fight the, the, the Canaanites. Go and fight them and win this country over fast. He didn't do that. He wanted to teach us something. He, he wanted to teach, firstly, men need to be obedient. If men and human or women have to be obedient to God, if they are obedient, nothing is impossible. But when they're not obedient, when they feel they're not right in the, in, in, the, in the instance, then they're not trusting or believing the God they serve. So God wants to demonstrate something to them so that they can see that it's only the power of God that can do this. Not an army, not swords, not guns. Only God can do something like this for Jericho. I saw something so profound here when it says the method. You know, some methods are so, so difficult. If you, if you take our army in South Africa and if they have to go and fight the battle, it's, it's, it's impossible for them to lose because they would just kill everybody. But here, it's just going. It's a form of obedience a form of declaration and a form of saying that if I march around here, I have a heart focused on God. If I take an, a gun or if I take the army, I'm focused on men. But when I focus on God, I'm able to do something different. So this is what the Lord is saying to you as the children of God. So march, take your rams on, Blow it clearly. Blow it as I command you to blow. And every time I command you to blow, walk around the uh, walk around the, the walls of Jericho. But before you walk around, always recognize the presence, the presence of God. Recognize that. Because sometimes we want to do things in our own strength. That's why God had to put the ark there. He needed to do, show the people that we got the priest and they are doing very well and they are holy and they can do well, but they must recognize my presence. If they don't recognize my presence, they cannot do anything. Nothing they do will succeed. So as Joshua be obedient to God, and the method that he used is the two things that I needed to bring to you. Obedience of God's presence. Obedience in what God instructed you to do. And sometimes we fail regarding that. And so after they marched the first day, after they marched the second day with the ark in front of them and blowing the ram's horn, I believe that 
there was some, God was preparing the ground. And this is what to, the thought came to me. Was that every time they walked, a little bit of the ground of the wall was lifting up. So the first day they walked, there was some ground lifting up. The second day they walked, the ground lifted up higher. The third day they walked, remember foundations are very strong, so sometimes you have to understand, in order to take that wall, for that wall to fall, there has to be something happening spiritually. And something, I think, I see God taking the angels without Joshua even seeing, go dig up there. Go dig up. But you know why? God gave Jericho into his hands. He says, I'm giving it into your hands. It's the past tense. It's not that Joshua, it's not that Joshua didn't know that God is giving it to his hands. It's because God already prepared. So if Joshua had to just be obedient. Walk and do that. Walk and do it. For seven days, walk, blow the trumpet. Walk around the, the walls of Jericho, blow the trumpet. Again and again and again. And every time that, that was done, the ground was lifting up. On the seventh day, just look at this. They walked seven times around. So that means it had to be lifted up even more than we could even think. So, seven times on the seventh day. And I'm just thinking, I don't even have a ram's horn here to share with you now. But as they blew, the, as they did the seventh time, and God gave the commandment, Lord, shout now. Shout and blow the trumpets. So even in the seventh moment of the seventh day, the seven times, he blew the trumpet and he shout with a loud shout unto God. And the walls came crumbling down. And as the walls came crumbling down, instructed, go in. Save a lady by the name of Rehab. Why? Because she was obedient to God in the beginning when the land was spied out. She listened to God and she hid the spies, the two spies that went in. Take her out. Take all her family. Everything that belongs to her and keep her safe. Now, go and flatten the land. Go. Do whatever you need to do. Flatten the land. So even right now, ladies, and for all those that are watching, even men today, I want to say to you, God never lets you down. All the walls that's around you right now, all the things that is blocking you right now, whatever is around you right now, whatever, however high the, the wall is right now for you, God is going to pull it down if you just be obedient to him and call unto him. Call unto him because he is the one that knows everything and he's already fought for you. Amen? He's already fought for you. So now I want to say this to you. As I come before you and I say, you know what? Divorce is not from God. I say to you, marriage, one man, one woman. I say to you that God loves you and he paid the price for you. I say to you, don't be fearful because God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. I say to you, young men, young women, I am sorry for whatever has, done, has been done to you in your life. We don't know what they've done to you. We don't know the pain that you've been through, but I am saying sorry on behalf of that person. Young woman, I am saying sorry on behalf of that rape. I'm saying sorry to you. Young uh, woman, I'm saying sorry to you on behalf of that abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse. I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry and God wants you to know that because God will save you like how he saved Rahab if you would come to him. I'm saying to you, whatever has been done to you, wherever you've been, God knows. He's been there. You may think you were in the dark, but he was right there. You may think he was far away from you, but he was right there holding you. 
I'm talking to all those guys out there in the world that's trying to change the world today. I'm telling you, you cannot go against God. God is powerful. He's the only God that died on the cross for you, that paid the brutal price for you. He's the only God that took away your sins and put it on the cross so that you will not be accused by the enemy. He's the only God that loves you so much and he's the only God that rose from the dead. So I want to say to you, today, I declare to you as the children of God, men and women, boy and girl, Jesus loves you and he wants to give you a promised land. And the reason why he did what he did for Joshua, he wanted to tell Joshua that if you could take possession of Jericho, then you can take possession of any other place. So I want to say to you today, go forward, be obedient, take possession, listen to God because he loves you and he will take care of you. I declare to you today that restoration on homes and families will be there. So this is what the Lord showed me. He gave me a few visions for you. The one vision was a table with full of donuts, coconut donuts, full. And I couldn't understand, plates and plates are full of it. And he gave me that vision to say to you that if you seek the Lord and if you worship him and you call upon him, this is the kind of life you'll have. The other th thing he gave me was a picture of two same bottles. And the one was full and the one was half full. But the, ha the top of the, the empty part of the bottle, there was like droplets, you know, like just droplets of the water. It's almost like the vapor was on there. And God is saying to you today, you know, just as much as one was full and the one was half, but I look at you the same even if you're this little droplet of water on the, on, the, on the screen, he looks at you as important and he loves you. And sometimes you think you are too small and he doesn't love you. If God could give Jericho into Joshua's hands, he can give you anything you want if you will believe and trust in him. And there was another thing that the Lord showed me was, he showed me a little um, a place that it was actually a home but the door handle was off and the step was very, very narrow. It was almost like you're going to fall. And God showed me there, he said, if, you know what, this place is not 100%, but I will get people to fix it. So maybe your life is not like that right now. Maybe you're not 100%, but God can fix it. And sometimes you're in a steep low, but God can fix it for you. So I want to share that with you and I want to bless you. So come, let me pray. So Father, as everyone are bowing their heads right now, every person bowing their heads right now, I pray, Father, that you will watch over every lady. Lord, you will restore every home. Father, even this home that you've shown me in a vision, Lord, it's, it's, it's a little bit messy. It's not altogether in, in order, but Lord, you, it can be fixed. It's some, some of the things are small. It's not that big. It can be fixed by saying sorry. It can be fixed by allowing people to come and help you. So, Father, I pray, wherever or whoever is hurting right now and need that kind of help, Father, I ask that you send your angels to go and surround them and lift them up. And even right now, wherever you are, if you're in a crowd with people, hold someone's hand and pray with them and pray and say, Lord, this is what I need. I need you right now. I need the sovereign God. I need Jesus. Only Jesus can lift me up from this problem. So today, I want to say thank you for this time. And I bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So hello, everybody. I'm so glad that you could join us for the time of communion. So I give you this opportunity for you to go and gather your communion uh, juice and your biscuits as we get into the time of sharing communion i'd like to read the scripture and it's from 1 corinthians 11 verses 23 to 26 and it says for i have received from the lord what i have also passed on to you 
the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. So communion to me is a very personal thing. I really um, believe at a time like this, when our world is in a pandemic, communion should be taken every day. So why do we take communion? The four reasons are, we remember, we remember what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. His blood that was shed for us and his body that was broken for us. One body, united. We celebrate our salvation through Jesus as a church. Third, his second coming. We declare to the world that Jesus is coming again. We, we are commanded to celebrate communion until Jesus comes again. And the final one is to receive a blessing. Holy communion is not a ritual, but it's rather to do with the blessing. So as we get into a time of taking communion, I just want you to remember that this bread represents his body and this represents the blood of Jesus. So Father, I just want to say thank you right now. Lord, we thank you as we partake. We are so mindful, Lord, that you went to the cross for us, that Lord, you died for our sins, mighty God. The Holy Spirit of God, we thank you right now for your blood that you shed for us. Father, we know that when we take communion, Father, we know we are declaring that we are healed. Lord, we declare that as we take communion, we know that every disease, every sickness in our body is being healed right now in the name of Jesus, mighty God. Father, we're so mindful for what you have done for us, my God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you because you are our only God. Father, we thank you as we partake that we will always remember what you have done for us on the cross of Calvary. So let's partake. Amen. Um, so I'm going to start from the beginning. When I was 13 years old, um, I had a very stressful period during exams and I lost the ability to write in my right hand. And um, I remember holding a glass and it just continuously dropping. And then one day it just it kept on getting worse. And then my dad noticed and we went to the doctor. And when we got there, he told us, oh, at least it's not MS, which is multiple sclerosis. And he was just reassuring us that it's just a one-time thing, it will pass. And it's just induced by stress. So when um, I, was in, I was in grade 10 and I was 16 years old, it happened again. And then this time they diagnosed me with multiple sclerosis. And it was one of the most scariest times of my life. But when I heard it, it was the, the peace of God just consumed me at that moment. Even though it was scary, I felt God very much so present. So Pastor Mikey and um, a bunch of our youth members, we were praying for PG-13. And what he did was that he told us to take up a sword in our right hands and fight. And the Monday that I had school, that's the same Monday, I lost ability to use my hand. So it was like a direct attack from the enemy. At first, it felt distant to me because I felt like this can't be my story based on the prophecies I have, based on what I believe, based on my own identity in God, this can't be my story. And then the reality hit in when I ended up going there to the hospital 13 times and I realized, wait, this is my story. This is what I have to deal with. And so I couldn't hide behind um, the stigma of Christian and being okay just because you're Christian. I had to deal with the hardcore ed evidence, but through it I still had faith that I would get my healing. And I was very angry at God. The fact that I had to go through this 13 times and each time it was, it dragged me down to a point where I felt your humanity is kind of taken away from you at that point. And while 16 year olds are getting their dresses for prom and all these fun party things, I had to think about my future in a very real way and one way I could possibly be crippled based on what people were telling me. 
it wasn't pretty conversations. I'm sure you can imagine it was why me. And it was at a point I felt as though I was abandoned a little. Even though he was as though it was just me at some points, but I did feel his presence and I knew that this wasn't going to be the end of me. I just felt at that moment pity and rightfully because I've been there 13 times and all my friends are reaching for their dreams and here I am in this hospital bed. There's a point where you can't make excuses anymore. There's a point where it's on you. There's a point where your disease is no longer the thing that holds you down and you decide that. There's a point where you can't take it anymore. And that point is when I stopped believing what my symptoms were saying, what the doctor was saying. I started believing in who I truly was. And I, started, I stopped c connecting my value towards if I was healthy and if I was not, because I realized even if I wasn't healthy, even if I was, whoever I was, I was gonna be of great value in the kingdom. So when I, that's, when I, that's when I decided to take up my sword and actually fight this. I'm someone who doesn't sit down. I've never been someone who sits down and I've always been keen to be in the battle and be a vessel for God. So when it came to it, I, I was reminded of David and how he never became a king not fighting a war. He had to fight something. He had to fight a big thing, a giant. And that's how he overcame and that's how he became a king. So I realized this was my opportunity to show God who I really am in him and to show people the glory of God. And I looked at this as an opportunity and I changed my mindset. And when God changed my mindset, he put so much blessing into my hand and so much opportunity. I just couldn't help but thank him for this, for him giving me this cross that he would choose me. My response was, I'm scared, Lord, but I know you there. I'm scared, but I'm gonna do it because you all I have and my value is in you. He changed my mindset completely. Um, he told me that it was a journey. I was looking for a destination and that destination to me looked like a healing. And he told me that it was a journey and that it's not gonna, it might not come to that, but I need to pick up my sword. I need to fight and I need to keep on going. And when I did that, that's when my healing came into place. When I listened to his voice, instead of prayed from a point of wishful thinking, I would tell them that he doesn't work on man's time clock and he doesn't work on your time clock and that as long as you have him, you can be put under the most amount of pressure and the devil can come at you a hundred times and you'll still overcome as long as you're under his provision. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everyone today who's hearing this message. I ask, Father God, that you will lift them up, Jesus, in the, in the darkest places that they feel you close to them, Lord, and that you will heal them from every part of their soul, Lord Jesus. You take them out of the darkness, bring them to the light, bring them to you, Jesus, that you draw closer to them and that, Father, they may see your glory and they may see how amazing you are, Lord. I pray that they may surrender to you and all that you need to do in their lives. I pray that whatever journey they face, Lord Jesus, that they may swim through it, Lord, that you will guide them, Father God, and you would be that light with them. We thank you, Lord, for your overwhelming love and your word that we can stand on. We pray your blessing over every single person right now and we claim your healing right now and we stand on your word. In your name we pray, amen. A powerful declaration is coming at you right now where you are. My sister Verona is about to sing the blessing over you, joined by some powerful women of God as they blow the shofar and usher in the presence of God. And it is the anointing right now that's going to break the yoke over your lives, over your families, over whatever situation it is that you're experiencing right now. We trust God for you.
declare and decree as God's people will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. I will heal their land. I decree that God has plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Plans for the hope and the future. I declare that God says in the name of Jesus that he that suffer not to the children of heaven belongs to them. I decree and I declare that whoever touches these little ones, it's better for you and make them come. It's better for you to put a mask around your neck and go into the sea. I declare that we belong to Jesus. So let ladies, let us shout. Let us shout and praise God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Jesus, we praise you, Lord.
Are you still with us? Hey, are there? Thank you for keeping tuned in. We are not done yet. I have the best part, and that is to ask you a very simple question. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? It is the best decision that I could have ever made for my life. And so today I want to give you the opportunity to receive the Lord into your life. With him comes peace, love, joy. I'm not telling you that life will become a bed of roses, but I'm telling you that you become possible with Jesus Christ. It's a simple prayer. Today the Lord can become your Lord. Would you like to pray with me? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I believe in my heart and I confess with my lips that you are indeed Lord God Almighty. I believe that God raised you from the dead. Today come into my heart, forgive my sins. Today I make you my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, welcome into our family, the mighty family of God. We want to welcome you. We encourage you to find a Bible teaching church somewhere in your area. Join them as you grow in the Lord. Now remember, just because the conference has come to an end, oh, by the way, it has come to an end. Just because it's come to an end does not mean you have to lose contact with us. If you want us to counsel you, if you want to reach out to us, please inbox us or leave a comment and we will reach out to you. God bless you. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. God bless you and your family.